What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Menace Forum UM690. And when it comes down to it, this is the most powerful mini PC we've tested so far with integrated graphics on the channel. This thing definitely puts the power down because it's using the Ryzen 9 6900 8 And with that, we do get RDNA 2 graphics. We'll go over the full specs in a second. And by itself, this thing is a great little gaming machine. But with this up front, we get USB 4. And this is a 40 gig port, so we can connect an eGPU. And we'll take a look at that by the end of the video. But yeah, I'm actually really excited about this one. And I can't wait to show you the performance that this thing puts out. Over on Menace Forum's website, the bare bones version of this is going for $4.99 or you can pick it up with 32 gigabytes of pre-installed RAM and by the way it is using DDR5. But inside of the box obviously you're going to get the UM690 mini PC itself. We've also got a stand, a SATA adapter because we can add a 2.5 inch drive in here. We've also got a VESA mount, and since these new H variants of the 6000 series do pull a little more wattage than old 5000 or even the U version, this comes with a 120 watt power supply. With this one, we can actually set it vertically or horizontally with the included stand. Personally, I like having it set up like this. It's actually going to draw air in from the bottom, push it out from the top, and the new cooler system they're using here does absolutely amazing with this Ryzen 9 6900 HX. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a 3.5mm combo jack. We've also got one USB Type-C 3.2 port, Gen 2, and we've also got USB 4. And like I mentioned, this is a 40 gig port, so we can get the maximum out of it, especially when connecting an external GPU. And also, since it is a 40 gig port, it will do 8K60 out if you've got a display that'll support it. Moving around back, we've got our power in, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, and two full-size HDMI ports. These will do 4K 60 out. When it comes to this Ryzen 9 6900 HX, it can get quite hot, especially running it at those higher TDPs, and you know, you definitely want to. We don't have to worry about battery with a mini PC like this, and we definitely want this thing to stay cool for long periods of time so we don't hit thermal throttle. So Menace Forum actually came up with a really nice cooler for this, and through all of my testing so far, I haven't hit 76 degrees Celsius at 55 watts. I mean, you could run it like that all day, and this thing doesn't get loud at all, but they're using a dual heatsink design. If you've got the PC in the vertical orientation, it's going to pull air in from the bottom and the front, and we've also got two vents, so the top and the rear. And instead of using thermal paste, they're using liquid metal, and this little combo that they came up with works really well with this APU, even at those higher TDPs. Now when it comes to the specs, obviously we've got that Ryzen 9 6900 HX with this one. 8 cores, 16 threads, and this APU is based on Zen 3 Plus. It's got a base clock of 3.3 GHz and a boost up to 4.9. We've also got the new Radeon 680M iGPU. It's based on RDNA 2, it's got 12 compute units, and it runs at 2400 MHz in these H and HX variants. So yeah, we've got a higher clock there. And this mini PC is also utilizing DDR5, which is really going to help out with that iGPU performance. We've got two SODIMM slots in here, so we can run it in dual channel. And it's recommended to use 4800 MHz DDR5, but from the BIOS, we've actually got a RAM speed setting. And on Amazon, you can actually pick up some 5600 MHz RAM. You could probably go a little faster with that. But for this video, I'm using 16 gigabytes of 4800 MHz RAM, overclocked to 5200 MHz, and it does make a difference. Now, I've got some faster RAM on order, and I know we can get a lot better performance out of this iGPU, but even sitting like this, this thing is a really great performer. We've also got a single M.2 2280 PCIe 4.0 slot for an SSD. It'll support a 2.5 inch drive. We've also got a 2230 M.2 slot, and right now I've got a Wi-Fi 6 module with Bluetooth 5.2 installed, and this will run Windows or Linux. But the very first thing I wanted to show off was a little bit of gaming using Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1080p, no FSR, no fidelity casts, and we're at medium settings. Remember, I do have that RAM overclocked to 5200 MHz, and you know, we use this system RAM as our VRAM, so it really helps out to have that faster speed. And yeah, this is definitely the best performance that I've seen out of an APU with this game. Right now, with it set up like this, no FSR, no CAS, we're getting an average of around 81 FPS. 1080p, medium settings, 
on integrated graphics. Obviously, this is fully playable, and just turning V-Sync on is going to lock this at 60 all day, but we can still get a lot more out of this by turning on either FSR or AMD's Fidelity CAS. It's recently been implemented with Forza Horizon 5, and I've actually had really good luck with it. You could go with FSR if you want to, but I'm just going to change CAS to Balanced, and now, instead of getting an average of around 82 FPS, we're up there at 98 on average. And if you turn your attention to Afterburner in the top left hand corner, near the bottom we've got the CPU package power. I'm actually at 55 watts, but right under that we've got the CPU temperature. With this game so far, I haven't gone over 72 degrees Celsius, and this thing is still really quiet. If I had to guess, the fan speed on this thing hasn't gone over 50% yet, and uh, you know, I'm sure this thing could get loud, but it really doesn't need to, even at 55 watts. Okay, so yeah, we'll get right back into some PC gaming in a second, but overall, this has been a really smooth experience. I've got Windows 11 Pro here, and uh, like I mentioned, I did overclock the RAM. It's rated at 4800 megahertz, but we're sitting at 5200, and you can add faster RAM. So uh, as soon as I can get my hands on something like 5600, we will add it. But we've got 16 gigs here running in dual channel at 5200 megahertz. But yeah, I mean, if you were going to pick something like this up for an everyday use case scenario PC, you're not going to have an issue with it. Even if you wanted to do some video editing and photo editing on this, we've got more than enough power. I mean, not to mention 4K video playback, email checking, web browsing. It's perfectly capable of all of that. I did want to show off a few benchmarks that I ran on this machine. And first up, we've got Geekbench 5 coming in with a really great single core of 1585. And Multi is looking really awesome for a mobile chip, 9,287. Next on the list, we've got some GPU benchmarks using 3D Mark. Night Raid, we got a total score of 27,597. Firestrike coming in with a 6,551. And finally, we have Time Spy. So at the top, we've got the Minus Forum UM690, the PC we're taking a look at in this video. We got a total score of 2,851. And the bottom score here is from the Ryzen 7 6800U. So with that, we've got the Radeon 680M, but it's only running at 2200 megahertz. But the reason it was actually able to beat out the 6900HX is the RAM speed. Now the one on the bottom was using LPDDR5 running at 6400 megahertz, and the UM690 were only at 5200 megahertz. But if you take a look at that CPU score, I mean, we're well above the 6800U. It's just a matter of that RAM speed. And remember, we use system RAM here as VRAM. If I can get my hands on some 5600 megahertz for this mini PC, we could actually beat that out, even though it'll still be running faster RAM. But either way you look at it, all of these scores are really impressive, given that we're working with integrated graphics. Now it's time to test out some more PC games, and first up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is using the same engine as Spider-Man Remastered, and that's just a really hard one to run on APUs. But as you can see here, at 720p low settings, we can get over 60 FPS out of it. And if you did want to run this at 1080, you could lock this at 45 FPS low settings and play it all day. I haven't tested GTA 5 in a while on these RDNA 2 iGPUs, but uh, you know, with the new driver updates that AMD has offered, and I guess game updates, we're seeing a really nice increase in performance. We're at 1080p, normal settings, and if I knew we were going to get this kind of performance, I mean, on average we're getting 95 FPS, I would have kind of mixed it up with some normal high settings. Personally, I still think it looks good like this, and yeah, it's really playable on this machine. I've been trying to get ready for Street Fighter 6, I know we got a little while, but uh, I've been playing a lot of Street Fighter 5 recently. 1080p, high settings, not a problem at all for the 6900HX. And uh, I mean, even if you wanted to lower the TDP here, this is going to run at 35 watts on this chip just fine. Here's God of War, 720p original settings, and kind of just like the Spider-Man games, you know, with these newer AAA games, 1080p, 45 FPS is totally possible, but uh, at 720 here, we can get over 60. Here's another newer game I've been playing a lot recently, Modern Warfare 2. So I just used the built-in benchmark, we're at 1080p with the recommended settings, and I'm pretty sure this takes basically everything to performance, even FSR. But with it set up like this, we got an average of 97 FPS. Then I went back through it at the balanced preset, and we averaged 73. 
and the final game we're going to be testing on the integrated graphics is Cyberpunk 2077. 720p Steam Deck preset, so this is using FSR and basically takes everything to a low medium mix. We can get an average of 68 FPS and if you need a little more out of it, we've got some more FSR that we can work with here. Obviously, gaming on this iGPU is pretty good when it comes to integrated graphics, but we can get a lot more out of this PC because we've got USB 4 up front. And even though this is an AMD platform, we can use a Thunderbolt eGPU. Right here, I've got my Sonnet eGPU dock, and one of my go-to cards for external GPU use is an RTX 3060 non-TI variant. I've had this eGPU dock for a couple years and it's a bit hacked up, but it does have a cover. I've just kind of modified it so we can fit bigger GPUs in here when it's needed. But all we need to do is plug this in. It's Thunderbolt 3. It's going to work over USB 4. Video signal is running from the RTX 3060 to the monitor. I'll move in a bit closer here. We've got that 6900HX. We can still access the built-in Radeon 680M, but you know, for gaming now, we're going to be using the RTX 3060. We've got 12 gigs of VRAM here, and it works pretty good over this 40 gig USB 4 port. God of War, 1080p, Ultra, we can get over 80 FPS out of this, and uh, you know, if you wanted to go with a more powerful card, you could. But for this video, I kind of wanted to go with something that's more accessible to a lot of people, and these docks are actually pretty cheap on eBay. You can pick them up used. You could also go with an AMD card, but for me, it's always hit or miss when it comes to the 6000 or even the 5000 series AMD cards using them in a dock like this. But you know, if you're interested in seeing a more powerful card attached to this, I can make a video. Just let me know in the comments below. Another thing I always like to take a look at with these mini PCs is just total system power consumption. And this is pulled from the wall. I use a kilowatt meter through all of my testing. And these are going to pull a lot more than Ryzen 5000. But uh, I mean, for what we're getting here, it's not that bad. At idle, we average 11 watts. Average gaming jumps up to around 67. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 88 watts. And keep in mind that all of these figures were taken from this mini PC while it was running at a 55 watt TDP. You can always lower this. I mean, you can go down to 15 watts if you want to, but it's not going to offer the kind of performance we saw in this video. And all of this kind of goes hand in hand with CPU temp. So at idle, we're around 38 degrees Celsius. Average gaming at 55 watts was only 71 degrees Celsius. And while running a 10 minute Cinebench stress test, this only hit 89 degrees Celsius. And I can't stress it enough, this thing isn't loud at all. Some of these mini PCs, you know, kind of spin up like a jet plane, but whatever new cooler system they're using in here, it is working really well with the 6900HX. So overall, very impressed with this PC. I love the fact that we've got that 40 gig USB 4 on the front. We can add an external GPU like you saw, but by itself, just running on the integrated graphics, you can definitely game on this machine. Now, I will have a couple more videos coming up. We're definitely going to be testing out Steam OS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. I'm waiting on some faster RAM. I ordered some 5600 megahertz, and hopefully we can take that up to 6000 from the BIOS. I'm pretty sure we will be able to. It's just going to take a little bit of tweaking. But yeah, this thing is really awesome. And if you're looking for one of the most powerful mini PCs with the integrated graphics right now, this is probably it. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, what did you think about the performance coming out of this UM690? I personally think it's really great. And on the channel, we test a lot of mini PCs. This is the best performing one so far. But keep in mind, I mean, we've always got new tech coming out. So maybe in a month, we'll get something better. But as it sits right now, I think this thing is awesome. If you're interested in learning more about the Menace Forum UM690, I'll leave some links in the description. And uh, let me know what you want to see running on this. I've got more videos coming. It'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn on notifications if you enjoy videos like this. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.